Hello. Well, a couple of y'all have been asking about me uh, since I got sick. Mm, trying to think of when I got sick. I know it was a Thursday, and today is a Friday. So maybe it's been eight days. I don't know. I've kind of been losing track of time. Um, one thing I didn't mention in my last video is uh, I had 21 extra pills um, from my last 30 day prescription which means that 21 of the days I took one less pill than what I was prescribed so I guess that's a good thing and I have two pills rattling around in here and the prescription was for the seventh so 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th, today's the 14th, be able to get through today until tomorrow, so, what is that, 8 days, um, I've been having some increased anxiety, I didn't get tested for COVID or go anywhere at all, I canceled my, uh, uh, all my appointments for this week as far as the aid workers, um, just because I uh, thought it would be a good idea. Been sleeping erratically. Uh, the way I feel overall is like just a not quite right feeling. A lot of fatigue. No more fever. No appetite or digestion type issues out of the ordinary. And you know, I just don't feel right. I've been feeling a lot more anxiety, uh, getting a lot of headaches, you know, um, the things out of the window because uh, my last electric bill was double because I was uh, using the AC a lot. And I'm like, well, I'll start putting the fan in the window. It's been still pretty hot around here, but, um, I uh, counted my chickens before they were hatched, you see, because I assume because the Democrats and the Republicans uh, were both on the same page as far as the $1,200 that I could spend $1,200, and I did. It turns out that uh, they had a lot of beef over the other things, so the $1,200 thing is, it's going to happen eventually, it's just not going to happen uh, this month, but it's really not, that's not a big deal, it's just... Uh, Oh, slightly annoying to me that I did that. I haven't regretted my TV purchase for $278 because it's a 58-inch TV for $278. And I've had much occasion to use it uh, since um, I've been sick. Um, yeah, I don't know about next week. Like, if I'll talk to the agency on uh, Monday, and I haven't done any housework except for the garbage. I just threw the bicycle off the porch because I was sick. And I was like, uh, I'm not going to go walk around and rearrange it. And I noticed that the lady didn't put out the garbage. Uh, the lady, Stampy, did not put out the garbage this morning. So I don't know what that was about. Um, the only, it's like I know I filled up the one can with my three garbage bags. Uh, so I don't, maybe she would. She's got like fiber mods or something like that, but um, she always puts the garbage out like religiously. Um, and then takes the cans back like as a matter of course, like within an hour or so of when they pick it up. It's just, you know, it's, I don't know what her deal is. But um, I don't know if there's something wrong with her or, or what happened. But why the recycled can was the only can out there and not the garbage bag or the garbage can that I filled with garbage bags. I don't know. It probably wasn't that heavy. But I wasn't going to do it. I was going to go out there special and do it. So it's like, hey, what do I care? You know, um, if it doesn't get done, you know, and it, there could be an overflow and then people tend to be stupid and put garbage bags like where the animals can get it and tear into it. And it makes a huge mess.
they don't think, you know, all you got to do is like pile the trash on top of the cans and it keeps a lot of the animals, except for the rat, raccoons, from getting in it. Because a lot of them can't climb up the sides of the can or they can't figure out how to get up there. Anyways, so, uh, but the gist of this is, uh, apparently I did really good as far as my uh, volume intake from last month. Um, I've been getting a lot of headaches, a lot of anxiety in the last week. Canceled uh, the aid workers. Probably have her, uh, probably just like talk to them and see, you know, where they're at about it. I'll just tell them I'm better, you know. I mean, I don't know if I'm better or not. I don't even know if I had any anything other than a cold. I don't know. It was just different than anything I've ever had before. It's just, it was different. I was think I was getting headaches because I was uh, getting anxiety from uh, too much laying around and not doing. And uh, so my heart was like... Uh, beating too fast and so I, sometimes if you take blood pressure pills and you mix them with uh, Valium you get a headache and uh, yeah um, I had to rearrange I, I think my I don't know if my new doctor is with the Altman group but I think he is but I, I had to reschedule that appointment because they insisted upon it um, for the 8th of September and then my uh it was weird but my the guy who prescribes the volume we had like the telephone phone call like appointment thing that they have in this covid world and uh he was like way late for it and i'm like well i gotta call this agency and talk to him and it's like i don't know what's going on here but i'm tired of waiting on him. so i talked to the agency and then he, he rang me and i didn't push answer on the phone and uh you know end the call with the agency because I was like I'll just call him back but then I checked his message and his message was like saying that he was running way late which was obvious that he was just going to move on to the next appointment and that he would try to call me later and like five days later I just made an appointment which is for the 15th of next month which is like way past when my pills are due which ironically enough because I was able to stretch my volume it's actually exactly when I'm going to crack into my new prescription for it so you know I'll probably still like call and say like hey look you know uh, I need a refill even if I'm like 30 pills ahead or whatever because it's just smart it's just you know, the smart thing to do instead of waiting for my appointment to talk to him about my meds and uh, just tell him to uh guy's name's Mark tell Mark that uh, my prescriptions do and I'll look it up on a computer and say oh yeah his prescriptions do and they'll call it in and then, you know if I ironically enough it's like um, the lady that's the manager like she's one of the upper echelon people for this aid agency that's been fucking me over uh, since the COVID thing as far as like uh, let me believe that they didn't have to do any housework. I had an appointment with her and I talked to her and I mentioned it and she seemed to just like water off a duck's back. Just like, you know, I didn't say it like forcefully like, hey, you guys screwed me. You know, like, <laughs> I just mentioned like, you know, they weren't doing any housework because she, part of her job is to ask like, when has stuff been cleaned? You know, and it's like, when's the last time your bathroom's been cleaned? And I'm like, I don't know. Has it, has it been clean this year? No. My bathroom literally has not been clean this year. Disgusting. That's why I tell people, go to a gas station if they come here. Don't go here. Except for, you know, my niece that was in Iraq. Uh, that's kind of a different story, you know. <laughs> she doesn't care. Uh, you, you've been stationed in Iraq. In uh, those conditions, you don't care. So... I got new clippers and I was planning on uh, getting a shower and uh, going clean head uh, with it um, but I never got around to it yet uh, that's what I was planning on doing actually 
But I know that I, I just read someone's comment on there that they're just wondering how I was, so I'm just the uh, uh, same. I guess the same as when the last time I was on here. It's like, uh, like I said, I initially got very sick. Like, uh, can't get warm, chills, teeth chattering, shaking, sick. And then, like, in five hours, the fever burned out on its own without taking anything to knock the fever down. It went down to 93. 93? 99.3. Like, within yeah, five hours, I'm just guesstimating. And I was like, what the fuck? That just doesn't usually happen. That's almost normal. And then I took some... Uh, uh, ibuprofen or something for my headache that I had because I, mean, I have been getting a lot of headaches lately. Um, that might have to, something to do with the weird sleeping I've been doing. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much what's been going on with me. Um, I thought I'd pop in here briefly and say so in case anybody was worried that I was in the hospital or anything like that. I feel like tightness in my chest and stuff, but it's a lot of inactivity, which isn't good. I haven't started like any sort of exercise program, which I really need to do. Uh, got the, you know, I got the depression thing going on that makes it difficult, and um, illness makes it difficult too. But even before the illness, I had like a depression thing going on. There's like there's different kinds that are different levels to depression. There's like the don't want to do anything depression, and there's the uh, deeper darker depression. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, I, I'm just annoyed at my. I'm, I I've been thinking a lot about the things I used to be able to do that I can't do anymore. You know. Uh, I was I'm wanting to sing a song, but my voice is a little little hoarse. It feels like I'm gonna cough or something. But um, there's so many songs about that. There's a line from a uh, L R L Burnside song that says uh, that things that I used to do take me all night to do them or something like that. That's like a sex reference, but. It's, it wasn't coming to mind. The other thing came to mind, but it would require me singing, and that's not a good thing right now. Um, yeah. So, um, I need, definitely need to shake things up a little bit as far as, like, uh, this stupid routine that I'm in where I'm, like, I still wake up in the morning, but I don't go to sleep until very late, like, you know, almost sunrise. I still wake up like in the morning. Today it was uh, 9.30 in the morning. I go to sleep like 5 o'clock in the morning. Something like that. I got a little bit more sleep than I usually get at night. So I don't I don't know what time I want to sleep. But it's like a brief bout of sleep at night. Wake up in the morning and then sleep in the afternoon. And then up at night I don't like that. I'm not getting enough physical activity. I don't like that. It's not good for my mood. Or my sense of empowerment. Like feeling like I have control of my situation. A census worker came to my door. So I finally filled out my census worker. Or my census thing online. And they ask you what race you are. And you can't like leave it blank. You're not allowed to leave it blank. Somehow it's important that we know the racial makeup of our country. When race isn't even really anything but something we made up. So that was annoying. But it wasn't enough that I put down white. I had to put down, like, what are you? Are you German, blah, 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 or Irish? I'm like, what the fuck difference does that make? What the difference does any of it make? But uh, I put in German, and my brother asked me about it. He said, what'd you put for white? <laughs> You're like two kids taking a test. What, what'd you put for number three? Uh, C or D? He put other. I'm like, oh, I didn't get, I didn't read to the other part. I just put in German, but he just put other because he didn't know what he was. I'm like, we're German, dude. It's like, uh, I used to think we were German and Irish, but we're, we're German, I guess. Um, 
which my dad looked, com I gotta get that picture off him. My dad uh, looked completely uh, as un-German as you could look. I mean, I mean, he looked Native American. Uh, yeah, he did not look uh, German at all. He had like a permanent farmer's tan. I guess that made it, that enhanced the uh, Native American look, but he had the high cheekbones. He had like a long, uh, pointy nose. It, it's like a completely different type. I got my mom's nose, so uh, I think I look more like my mom than my dad. But um, anyways, um, so things are pretty boring here in Steveville. Uh, I need to try doing stuff, but I, I just want to make the aid worker who I called Denise uh, do everything. I just want I just want to punish her. I mean, I did the garbage, that's about it. But, um, you know, I can make her bag up the garbage and stuff. I can make her, like, do everything. It's like, I want, it's like, I was thinking about rearranging my living room and, like, sweeping the floor and I'm like, nope, I'm gonna make her do that. It's like, nope. Uh, yeah. I want to make her, like, do everything. Clean the toilet. The bathroom that hasn't been cleaned for a year. COVID, technically, uh, I'm actually a clean person by the standards of our family. How crazy that is. You know, but, uh, technically the COVID thing started in, uh, March. As far as, like, the bans and the letter I got from the agency and stuff. So my bathroom still hadn't been cleaned for like two and a half months, at least, if it hasn't been cleaned since the first of the year. The rest of the time, I felt like they didn't get paid enough uh, for them to clean the bathroom. <laughs> Cause the, so the bathroom been a fucking horror show for like ever. But yeah, I don't know if you remember my story about my sister and her dirt shoes. But yeah, that's like indicative of the madness and... Uh, uh, filthiness and um what would you call it uh, pack readiness of uh my family a lot of pack rats in my family i was spared that particular malady uh, as far as like i i want to throw stuff out i just don't you know i don't like to waste things but i want to throw stuff out so i got i got all this stuff piled by the door for like a month now that this person's supposed to pick up that's like gardening stuff it's obviously I have no use for and um, they haven't picked it they haven't picked it up and I'm like well, what what if I just like the thing about it is, is the hallway closet opens from the inside and the door is like really heavy it takes a really strong person to like lift it up and push it even my nephews like 270 280 pounds um, was having trouble with it. And I'm like, there's no way I can get that, um, heavy, I'm being kind now, uh, heavy aid worker to open that door, let alone fit in that door. So I was like, I wonder if I could like do that and push all that stuff, gardening stuff, and just pushed in the hallway closet just to get it out of my living room because it's just taking up space. And, um, I never thought I would be have such a hard on for um, housework. It's like I would love to do housework. And um, there's certain chores I never minded very much, you know, as far as housework. And I, I was, I'm considered like neat within the family. And um, <laughs> which is just funny. Uh, but I like a clean floor. I've always liked a clean floor. You know, I'm not crazy about like uh, dusting. You know, like in, uh, washing walls and stuff like that. No, I've done that kind of stuff before when it gets uh, too weird. You know, because I got to like put my hands on the walls a lot for uh, studying my balance and stuff. I did have a thing where I, I would have fell like straight over backwards out of the bathroom, but I caught the sink with my like right hand and I reached around and I smacked the door with my left hand like hard enough to knock a man out. And I'm like, oh, fuck, my hand's going to be all screwed up. But, I mean, it made a smack. It was like, a, a, you know how they have 
the Giants and wrestling. The big guys always smack people on the chest. It was like an Andre the Giant slap on the door. My hand's not quite been the same since. It feels a little arthritic, but it should be a lot worse. Because I was, I was just going over backwards. That was like um, sometime during my, um, what do you call it? D during whatever I had, whatever illness I had, that was like during the height of it. I lost my balance and I started to go over backwards. And that's how I caught myself. The sink wasn't going to be enough to catch myself because my feet would have slid out from underneath me and, sl and probably would have injured my toes, slamming into what's left of the... Uh, uh, bathroom cabinet what really caught me was slapping my hand against the uh, side of the door jam like that that's what really held up my weight which did my arm and my hand no good but uh, yeah it was interesting when the aid workers boss asked me if I had any falls after I told her like that my aid worker wasn't doing any housework and I didn't say like yeah I had a fall when I was doing housework that your company was supposed to be doing it's like I just don't, I don't know man, I can do confrontation, I just don't like it, you know, I don't like getting angry, I tend to get angry, because I didn't have that option growing up with my father, I guess, I don't know, I, so I, I tend to get very angry, I don't have like calm confrontations with people, it's always angry, you know, so I don't like to lose my temper. Just have a bad temper. Um, but I think that's why I have a bad temper. There's a lot of stomping going on upstairs right now. Yeah, things... You know, I feel like I should be on here for at least a half an hour. To, uh, uh, since you're bothering to tune in, even though I'm talking about nothing. Um... Yeah, I just, uh, sometimes it's hard to shake yourself out of a funk, and like, um, now that I'm talking, because uh, I do talk to myself, like, I listen to, uh, I Am Legend, the famous sci-fi book from, like, uh, by Tim Matthewson that they based The Last Man on Earth with Vincent Price on, The Omega Man, the new movie with uh, Will Smith, which kind of missed the point of the whole thing. Um, but anyways, the guy was like, it's weird to hear my own voice. And I'm like, bullshit, man. If you're alone that much, there's nobody else on earth, you're going to be talking to yourself, dude. But yeah, I don't talk to myself apparently enough to realize that, whoa, when I start this talking stuff, my voice is not going to feel too good. So yeah, my voice doesn't feel too good. And, um, this generally feels weird to be talking. Um, I've been having issues with my phone, so I haven't have, been having a lot of phone conversations. Interestingly enough, like my friend called me. Well, I called him to tell him when after I got sick. Just like I don't know to tell him that I was sick or whatever. I don't know. But he, it's interesting that he told my brother, and then my brother didn't call me for like three days and ask how I was. Asked me, I think I thought, you know, he'd at least be curious, like, if I had COVID or whatever. So I called him up, and he didn't mention anything about me being sick or anything like that. And I thought, I thought you know, man, I thought maybe would, people would be curious. Because that one day... I got sick and then I called a couple of people the, the next day and the one response was really weird like oh that's just a bunch of bullshit anyway like I said it's like well you could ask me how I'm feeling or, you know and I it wasn't like I said I think I got COVID you know it's like I, I got real sick last night and uh, woke up and was all chilled and stuff and they were like uh, it might be coronavirus so they brought it up not me and then I was like yeah I thought about that they were like, ah, oh, it's all a bunch of bullshit anyway. And I was like, well, it doesn't feel like a bunch of bullshit right now. And then then uh, they were. They also said, um, you know what? They, they went into this whole conspiracy thing that I guess is running around the internet. Because that's what the internet is for, is pornography and conspiracies. Um, but it's, it's running around and it has something to do with Bill Gates 
and uh, he wants everybody to be tested so that he can implant uh, some sort of computer thing in them that uh, is going to be the mark of the beast from Revelation or something. It's some kind of uh, idea that people got. And uh, it's not that I don't think we'll ever come to that where we'll, we'll have tracking chips or like we'll, we'll, everything, all our buying and and selling they'll be we'll have a cashless society and it'll be all electronic you know if you know your bible you won't be able to buy or any sell anything without the mark of the beast and all this stuff if you want to play that game but anyways but it just uh, this particular conspiracy theory it just doesn't add up too well so anyways they went into all that and they were like you know what if i had a vial of covid stuff i would drink it on camera and uh, put it on the internet and I'm like, well, you can always come over here and I'll breathe right in your face if that's what you want. And she said, they said, like, uh, I'm not afraid to come over there. They haven't been over here. And you're like, I'm not afraid. I'll go over there. I'm not afraid of it. What? <laughs> this is the weirdest conversation I ever had. But I don't ever call, uh, call my uh, family for um, consolation. I only call them for aggravation. I expect aggravation, actually. It's like, uh, oh, here we go, you know, I don't expect, it's not like, uh, they're not going to give me any comfort, uh, you're not going to give me any consolation, I already know this, they'll give me help, I, I won't say that, like, they're totally uh, antagonistic, you know, they'll help me out in different ways, um, but it will never be emotional, you can forget that shit, excuse me, uh, it'll be like, uh, you know, or you need a few dollars, or you need me to do something, like, uh, uh, well, usually there's money involved, like, uh, me offering them money to do stuff, and, uh, eh, I don't know, I don't like talking bad about my family, which means I shouldn't talk about my family altogether, uh, they're just amusing in their own way, you know, just, they're interesting people. But yeah, that conspiracy stuff. I don't go in for that. That's why I even went this Corona thing. If I would had hadn't heard it from a actual person inside the medical community, which was when I had my cardiology appointment, I talked the uh, I talked to the doctor, and they were like, she told me outright that they were incentivized to diagnose COVID and inflate the numbers. So. We had a conversation about that and it's like I did not ask her like what do you think of this COVID mess it just came up organically and she was like she was she brought that up and she was like I've never seen anything like it before I've been a doctor for a while so there is some kind of like uh, I think it has some something to do actually with the political sphere but I was, I was like well it's either got to be political or pharmaceutical you know, there's money behind it somewhere. You always follow the money. It's like, uh, could be like a combination of political and uh, pharmaceutical because the it's a corporate world nowadays. And um, these senators, and that's why I don't go in for the whole left-right democratic thing, is because there's favors owed every which way. And, um, it's a dirty business and that's what all it is is a business it's all about uh, money and um, yeah I don't know why people even bother with the whole left right you know that's all that's all over the internet is uh, team red and team blue and liberal and it's like like I always just tell people I'm apolitical I don't believe in left and right I believe in right and wrong and I don't even follow any of that crap or care about any of it but uh yeah, I do, like, watch news stories and stuff on on uh, YouTube. And I look stuff up on the internet and read articles and whatnot to um, kind of keep apprised of these things. And uh, I guess there was a shooting in Texas because uh, BLM went into Texas thinking that they could surround a car in Texas. And there was a guy on there that I had actually watched 
they got to say I told you so because he was like please don't you know people associated with BLM and Antifa do not go into Texas thinking that it's going to be the same as it is in other cities like Minneapolis or New York it's like those ladies that are like all dolled up and stuff you know they carry guns in their purse they will shoot you and then they will wait for the cop to come with an unloaded gun hand them the gun and uh, you know just like it's nothing and uh, so I guess uh, there was like a protest whatever you want to call it and uh, protests I don't know about carrying like AK 47s and shit when you're protesting that's just I'm old so Protesting to me was you carried a sign. You, can, you couldn't shoot anybody with a sign. You could maybe sharpen up the point and stick them. Like in I Am Legend. With the vampires and stuff. But uh, protests nowadays. I guess you carry automatic weapons. So anyways. These protesters surrounded a car in Texas. And very predictably one of them got shot. So. Um, you know the guy was like. I tried to tell him not to do that. <laughs> He's like. Texas is a different animal. You don't go down there with a bunch of guns and expect not to get shot. He's like, don't pull the same stuff that you were pulling in other cities. He's like, it's not going to work in Texas. Uh, but anyways, um, point being is I do follow the news, but it's like, I don't go in for the whole political nonsense because... Uh, we as uh, private citizens, we don't understand all the dirty dealings that's going behind the scenes, all the political promises that are owed, and uh, that's why there's so much um, uh, out lying involved is they don't have any choice because they get their promise in this party one thing and promise, and by party I mean like a uh, group, individual, corporation. They're making promises all over the place to get camp campaign contributions to get elected and stuff. Then when they do get elected, it's like they can't keep all the promises, so they got to be lying to somebody. Then they got to make promises to us as the people to get them elected, which they can't keep. Uh, after the, I don't know how the Trump thing is going through. I mean, after uh, Congress failed us and um, didn't do anything about unemployment or extending um, benefits, or you know, there's so many people out of work because of the COVID thing. Uh, Trump like signed a bunch of stuff but there's questions about the legality of it you know and it's like I haven't checked up on that to, w to whether that's gone through but that did not include that not in fact affect me personally because it does this doesn't include any stimulus checks it was about uh, um, something to do with uh, I forget the uh, phrasing of it but it has something to do with the uh, helping um, companies out and then also extending unemployment, uh, maybe the extra unemployment benefits. I don't know, but whatever it is, what I had heard about it is that um, legally it's a joke and it puts a lot of the burden on the state. And the governor of New York, who I think is Cuomo, I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. I don't, I don't really follow politics. You know, I don't know why I'm talking about it, except for like, I, I, I try but anyways, in New York, the guy was like, it's ridiculous. He's like, he's putting all this burden on um, the states, and the states don't have the money to cover what he's promising. You know, so they're, I'd, I'll have to, like, look that up and see, like, how that's going. But I know that Trump immediately after Congress was like, fuck it, we can't get nothing done, we quit. Um, he uh, And had their, uh, their usual August recess, which they have every year. Uh, he signed some stuff in the, in the legislation, but it could be like a grandstand type of play. Like, look what I'm willing to do, but it won't hold up legally. And it's stuff that has to be uh, ratified by Congress. So, you know, if you know your history, like with the Gaddafi and the Reagan thing, it's like that wasn't a strictly legal thing that Reagan did, but Gaddafi's family members still got killed. You know, it's like you have to consult Congress before you commit acts of war. But, yeah. So, I don't know how that went down with what I'm saying. I don't know why I went there, but that's always fascinated me. Because I remember when that was happening and scratching my head about it. It's like, 
So if you're president, you can just basically shoot a missile at somebody just because you feel like it. You know, like, okay, they shot a missile at Gaddafi and killed two of his brothers, but he walked the straight and narrow after that. Uh, they killed some of his family. I don't know if it was two of his brothers, but they killed some of his family. But anyways, um, about the Trump thing, I got no idea, like, uh, if that's going to stand up. They make these grandstand plays where, like, uh, cause, especially because it's election year, where it's like, look what I'm trying to do. You know, and then the, the, the Democrats are like, uh, we're trying to get this passed for the American people, but all we're running in is trouble from the Republicans, and the Republicans, it's all back and forth, but it's all a bunch of fucking nonsense. It's not worth my time following. So, you know, when I hear the words liberal, leftist, um, <laughs> or watch any of the Fox News things that I watch just to get a basic idea of what's going on in the world, I just tune all that shit out and just listen to what's being, what actually happened, you know. Ignore the filter, ignore the spin, just stick on the events of what actually happened. This guy got shot. This uh, mayor in Olympia's house got painted. They got video of that. This happened or that happened. And then you just got to like not let the rest of the stuff like sway your opinion or uh, seep into your head if you can manage it. Because um, it's all just so much propaganda in the news. It's, uh, it's to the point of absurdity. And this whole thing like... Um, the COVID thing being amplified and then like, I think we're all be just basically being played as far as uh, COVID, like it's a real thing, it's a dangerous thing to people that are susceptible to it. It's killed a lot of people, but it's like, if I got a doctor telling me that they're paying doctors extra to diagnose it, that means there's an inflation in numbers, that means there's a purpose behind that and it being an election year and then them fighting over COVID relief and trying to make each party trying to make the other party look bad it's all about power and money man it's got nothing to do with uh this um new strain of a of coronaviruses which there's many coronaviruses now this is just kind of a weird one i don't know if i had it I don't know what I had. I just never had anything like it before. So and I don't know if I still got it. I just I still don't feel right. I don't feel bad either. You know, it's just I feel lazy and fatigued like and uh, unambitious. But that could just be my natural personality. So seeping through. It just could be like I, I got depression. My knee is not swollen because I haven't been doing anything. It's like oh, my knee's not swollen for a change. That's weird. But it's just because I haven't been doing anything. Uh, and it's like once I get started with the housework, I want to keep going. And I always push myself past the point because I actually want to do housework. I don't like living in a filthy place. I don't like, uh, you know, having roaches and all that. Which, that's another stigma that makes no sense at all. It's like the roach and filthy place thing. It's like, no. I was in a place that had roaches and I abandoned it and did not live in it and turned all the taps off tight so they had no water supply. When I got back to that place after not living it, in it for a month, I lifted up an alarm clock and moved it. And because uh, of the heat underneath the alarm clock, there was a whole uh, town moot. A town meeting of roaches underneath there, there like 30 of them it freaked me out and I'm like Man, there's roaches all over this damn place there's nothing in here for them to eat and what it is, is if you live in an apartment building you know they're gonna they don't eat they don't first of all they need very little sur to survive it has nothing to do with your cleanliness and uh, they need very little to survive and uh, if you live in an apartment building you really have no control over it because have no control over what other people are, you know, bringing in or doing in their apartments. That's how I got them in the first place. So I've not, I haven't changed in neatness since I've been living here. And I've had roaches for, oh, 
I got them like right around the time I got bed bugs. So that would be um, hmm, going on two years. I've had them. Um, I get rid of them for a time, and then they come back, and I get rid of them for a time. And it's like I just put down some paste to uh, to take it back to the nest paste like a while ago, and then they came came back. I didn't see any for a while, and then they came back quicker this time than it, than they usually do. And I'm running out of that stuff. Uh, I had to pay an expensive electric bill. I've been spending more money on football cards, and I'm not doing my work as far as like taking pictures of my cards and get ready to sell them. And as far as like when, if there's even going to be a football season, I don't know, you know. But anyways, uh, so yeah, I was actually pretty proud of having 21 pills left over from. Uh, 30 day prescription which means like I'm holding up pretty good as far as like uh, my benzo intake so I don't know why I didn't mention that I, things just slipped my mind um, because uh, clearly these are unscripted and unresearched or I would be like well the facts and figures on these uh, what Trump has said is he said this 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 and this you know and I'm be looking down or off camera so I just like staring off into space when I talk to you so you don't have to look into the uh, unnerving depths of my soul so um, yeah I just want to let you know that I'm alright uh, this is odd and quirky and shirtless as ever and hopefully I will be even more unclothed because I will I got new clippers the, the fucked up thing is these clippers I don't know why I think it's the case but they smell horrible I can't even describe the smell of them the clippers themselves don't smell it's a brand new kit it's got this weird industrial funky chemical smell to it to the point where I put it in my bathtub and I just like threw it in my bathtub and I'm like uh, this is the stinkiest room in the house so this is where it belongs and I was like uh, maybe it'll air out and I don't think it's still I still don't think it's aired out I've used the clipper since then to clipper my uh, uh, beard down, and um, they're like brand new, exactly what I wanted. I got them fairly cheap, I think for um, $21, and it's a whole kit with scissors. It's a brand new kit, and it comes in a nice case that smells to high heaven. It's, it smells so bad, you can smell it from across the room, and it's like a weird chemical burnt rubber smell. It's very strange. I don't know why. Or why it smells like that. I'm thinking like why don't I just throw out the case. It's a nice case though. You know it's a nice con air case. It's like why don't I just throw out the case. And uh, throw out like everything with it. And just keep the clippers and wash the scissors off really good. And keep the combs. I don't even use the combs really. I mean I, cl I don't use a comb when I clipper my hair off. And I, I just uh got a decent deal on razors so I was thinking like why don't I just start shaving my head down just try it you know and see what that's like uh, I shaved my head like I said once when I was in my 20s just as I don't know if like uh, I had a premonition that I was going to be going bald at some point and fairly early in life late 30s I started to go bald so um, I was like I wonder if I got one of them ugly heads that look like they got a hot dog roll on the back or a bunch of lines and scars. So I know I got hit in the head with a rock by uh, Brett Gaff and damn near knocked unconscious before I beat the ever loving shit out of him. So I know I got a nasty scar like right here. That's uh, cause I had blood all over me that day, and so did he. Um, when I from when I was younger, and I know I got the scars like here and here from the uh. Halo traction screws being screwed in my head just like I have them here and here because it's four screws. Um, so, anyways, I I'm, next time you'll see me, you'll see me with a clean head, and I'll try the uh, the full bald. This thing here with the little sprigs of like a sparsely populated forest is really just stupid looking just looks really bad uh, so yeah 
Then again, I'm shaving my... I'll, I'll do whatever is the least pain in the ass. Um, if shaving my head, head is like a bother, I, I won't shave my head. I'll just clip, keep clipping it. Those are a good set of clippers. And, uh, yeah, so next time you got that to look forward to, seeing a bald me. Oh, boy. Your life will be totally fulfilled, I assure you. Ah, so anyways, blather, blather, blah, 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 talk, 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 words, words, words. Yeah, I said some stuff, and now you know how I am, so you know I'm alright, and I'll be around uh, to amuse, bore, intrigue, and mystify you upon occasion. So, um, I will check in uh, probably sooner than I did this last time since um, people expressed concern and I really don't feel that bad as far as like if this is COVID it's different for everybody some people get it and they don't even know they have it I got sick but it wasn't real bad it wasn't even as bad as the flu so it's like a wild card type of thing you know I could have got sick and uh, kicked the bucket or I could have got sick and not felt anything. It's just one of them things. It's uh, completely unpredictable. But it is how they contagious. We do know this much about it. And we do know it's a real thing. And it should be taken seriously. And people should come into your house and breathe their dragon breath in, in your face. And companies shouldn't pull ranks. And they should get tested. And their top supervisors who I spoke to that's over top of the actual company should act a little bit more concerned I actually called her house and got her husband she wasn't awake and it was like 9 46 in the morning and she has I was sick and I wasn't checking my one phone because I was using my other phone and I'm like oh she's leaving me all this message she's behind again because this was for her July report and she's not doing it until the middle of August she was supposed to have it done by July so you know and I call and I get her husband. Her husband's like a hem hauling around and all flustered, having trouble taking down my different phone number and stuff. And um, yeah, I, so poorly, it's very shoddy run company, and it's like they should not be allowed uh, to not be tested because they're dealing with the most high risk people. But I've already said that, as I've probably already said approximately 32.9 percent of things said in this particular video so with that i will bid the adieu and uh see y'all the next time and just say goodbye because that's what you do when you stop talking to people people don't say that on the phone anymore you ever notice that it's like i sound like it sounds silly to me where i was like like bye or i say bye bye or bye or bye bye uh, bye bye is usually my thing. That's just you know, it's like, uh, am I the one like sound like a little kid? But people don't like to say goodbye anymore. They just like to terminate their phone calls on the last thing they said. I'm just curious about that. Is that one of the many things that have changed over these low these many years that I've been alive? Uh, so I'm going to end this without saying goodbye, just to fit in with the times. <laughs>